Originally this was called the Murdoch Farm, Murdoch Hill. This is one of the higher places in Westbrook actually, this hilltop. And it was all farmland um, from the colonial period. So the house behind me originally was built by a gentleman named Enoch Murdoch. It was built around 1750 from the information that we have. And it had been a farm throughout the uh, 19th century all the way up until the 1920s um, when these two women came from New York City looking for a summer home. So they were both professionals. Um, so Esther Lape was a college professor of English and Elizabeth Reed was a lawyer, one of the, the few female lawyers in the country at that time. And they wanted a sort of a getaway in a quiet country town that was right on the railroad so they could come out here. And they fell in love with this place and used it a little bit as it, as it was as a farm for um, flowers and vegetables and things. But mostly it was just a retreat where they could enjoy nature. When they bought the property, again, all that was here was this old 1700s farmhouse. Um, and they, they invited so many guests over the years that they really wanted a bigger house. So they built this large stone house and it was based on designs from the Italian Alps. So it's really unique to this area. You won't see anything like it as far as I know anywhere else in Connecticut. And it has huge bedrooms on the second floor. So when the architects were, were designing it, um, they told Esther Lape that what would really dress up the inside was real wood paneling. But the women were fairly well off, but they didn't want to spend a fortune on the house. And they also were really into reuse of things. So there were actually mansions being torn down in Manhattan that Esther Lape heard about. Um, so these are huge houses that had hundreds of doors. So she asked um, some local folks if they could turn those doors into her wood paneling. And uh, it's got nice balconies that you could enjoy at that time, really nice views of Long Island Sound all the way across the property down to the water. Uh, it's all local stone and reused materials. So it's pretty neat that they were kind of recycling in the 1920s. So they liked to do a lot of things. They loved gardening. They loved to horseback ride. And they did a lot of other things like archery. They had Siamese cats um, that they took care of here. So lots of different things, mostly outdoor stuff. So one of the very best friends of Esther Lape and Elizabeth Reed who came here quite often from the 1930s until 1962, the, day, the year that she died, was Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, so she really viewed this place as a quiet retreat where she could get away from a lot of her official duties. Eleanor and her transportation. One of the systems that she used, especially during the war, was the railroad because of security reasons. The railroad could keep her more secure than traveling uh, over uh, roadways in cars and being stuck somewhere and being in awkward situations. But the railroad was always on time. And that's where we are now, right off the beaten path, so to speak, uh, right behind me. It was running currently the uh, Amtrak uh, system back then. When Eleanor was using the rails, it was uh, New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad. And uh, she had uh, the rights and usage uh, and security of the train stopping here. Being a platform was set up specially for her to be dropped off privately and secretly. Uh, so she didn't make any stops at a station. And here it was right in the back door where she enjoyed the most the refuge here at the property of Lake Perry. There were originally three log cabins on the property, east, west, and south. And this is one of them. We're not sure which one it was. What's so unique about it is that it was built from the logs that fell, the trees that fell, sorry. Um, from the hurricane of 1938. What's really cool about this is that we 
know that Eleanor Roosevelt, when she was here, would go to a log cabin and just write, and those are really neat stories. It's like in today's blogging. All her stories were like today's blogging. This is the area where the ladies would come down to picnic. They loved being by the marsh, the cooler temperatures over here by the water with this, when it was hot summer days. Um, you could see the circle over here, the stone circle is where they sat. There used to be a table platform um, on top of that. And they would just enjoy the view. The, of course, the little trees and shrubs were not there, so they had a clear view of the um, marsh and all the birds and wildlife that would come here. We got some plantings here from Narcissa Vandalip with her daffodils, which she put all over the property um, at a certain special points. They started thinking about it as a refuge in, in the 30s, 40s, but something happened in the 1950s that really pushed their idea to protect it as a wildlife refuge or a sanctuary. So the state came out with a couple of different plans for rerouting Route 1 along the coastline. And one of the plans called for going right through this marsh, right over the Monongatesic River, through the main body of the marsh and through a lot of the farms that, the old farms that were here. So in the 50s, they started a, a push to really stop that from happening and to protect what really was at that time and still is today, even more so. Um, some of the best preserved marshland and old forest along the coast of Connecticut. Um, that didn't happen until 1972 when Esther Lape finally handed it over for free to the U.S. government as Connecticut's first National Wildlife Refuge. It's really a unique place in that there are so many habitats um, in, a, in a fairly small area. So we've got a pretty big meadow and scrub shrub area. We've got some of the oldest maritime forests that's left along the coast in Connecticut. And we have a pretty well-preserved marsh here. So the ecosystem, along with the islands just offshore, is, is really neat. Um, and it's, it's cool that Westbrook has it, a nice quiet corner where people can come see wildlife, but also just relax, walk around, contemplate things. And it's also really good at different times of the year for bird watching. So you can see shrubland, you can see forest birds, you can see lots of birds down in the marsh like glossy ibis or um, blue herons that you might not see other places. So it's pretty neat. You can also do things like snowshoe or cross-country ski in the winter time. So my favorite part of this job is education and especially working with younger people and opening their eyes to creatures that they may have not seen before or not thought about too much like crabs at the beach or birds um, on an island, things like that. So I get to do that a lot um, through environmental education that we do in school and on the refuge. 